I've been racking my brain trying to think of clever ways to make this video about how awesome it is to wear and how it feels good buying new tech. But with the Galaxy Ring, it's just not the case. It's both boring and exciting at the same time. Exciting that they're able to fit so much tech into such a small space, but boring because you really don't even notice it. But I do think that was the goal. There's no haptics to let you know that it's recording a workout or that it's even doing anything at all besides the occasionally seeing the green lights flashing when you wake up in the middle of the night or enter a dark room. But it still has its place and a target audience. See, I'm a watch guy. Always have been. I would even go as far as say I'm a bit of a collector. But when smart watches came around, it kind of slowed down for me. Especially now that they're so good. This might be a hot take, but I think that is exactly who Samsung is targeting with this ring. The people that don't want to wear a smartwatch, but still want to be able to track steps, heart rate, and sleep patterns. That's not to say that you can't wear both, but if you do, then the ring will kind of take a back seat and only count steps and automatic workout detection. Sleep tracking and heart rate will default to the watch. The ring itself is made from titanium and is 7mm wide and 2.6mm thick. It's crazy to think that they crammed an 18 or 23 milliamp hour battery, depending on the size. There's a Bluetooth transmitter, eight gigs of storage, and your basic health tracking sensors, including a temperature sensor. It's available in sizes five through 13, and I highly recommend getting the free sizing kit. I measured my finger with a ring sizer that I had here, which said that I was an 11, and when I received my 11, it did not fit. So I've been wearing it on my pinky. And strangely enough, it doesn't seem to notice or mine, but the recommended finger is the index. Knowing this, I still decided to size it for my ring finger. But like I said earlier, I'm a watch guy, not a ring guy. Don't really know the difference. I'm wearing the black version, but there's also silver and gold. I would probably say the silver is the better choice uh, if you're at all active. I feel like that one is most likely just natural titanium, whereas the others are painted. And the one I'm wearing is already showing signs of scratching and wear. In the box, you get the ring inside of a clear case that is used for charging. This has a 360 milliamp hour battery and can be charged wirelessly or by USB-C. To reach full charge, it takes about 80 minutes and can fully recharge the ring one and a half times and should give you 16 additional days without needing an outlet. Oh, I think I forgot to mention that the ring itself will get you six days for the smaller battery and seven days for the large. I do think that these numbers are when it's paired with the Galaxy Watch because like I said earlier, when using both, the ring does not take priority over tracking. It's more of a low power mode. When you open the charging case, there's an animation that shows you the battery level of the case itself. And when you put the ring inside, that same animation shows you the power level of the ring. Before we get into the health metrics, I do want to point out that if you do not have a Samsung device, then this ring will not work for you. I do think that is kind of a bummer, but one good thing that came from it is that there is no subscription like the Aura Ring. That ultimately was the deciding factor for me. I never would have bought it had there been a monthly fee. I'm curious though, leave it in the comments, would you still be interested if there was a subscription? And if you would, how much do you think would be fair? All right, so Samsung Health is where you will find all your metrics and data. Overall, it's a pretty good app. It's pretty easy to find the, the data you're looking for and understand the metrics. There's even a new metric that compiles all of your data from the day and assigns it a value one through 100. They call this your energy score, and if you don't get good sleep, you can hang up having a, a high score. Ask me how I know. This is by far what affects my score the most. One night I stayed up late to edit, and the next day my score dropped by like 15 points. I will admit though that this whole gamification of health has been pretty effective at keeping not just myself, but my whole family in an active state. We've all been competing on steps, sleep score, and energy score through the Together tab at the bottom of the app. This is where you can invite other users to compete in different challenges and achievements. I talked a little bit more about this in my Galaxy Watch Ultra video, and if you haven't seen that video already, then shame on you because I really thought we were friends. One area of the health app that I found a little bit annoying is that it does not differentiate, but differentiate between devices. I may be the only one that wants to know this and let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but 
it would be nice to be able to see the difference in metrics between each device. At the top, you can clearly choose between the ring and the watch, but the data is all the same. And I'm sorry, I just don't believe that they're both so accurate and so in sync that they read the exact same way. But for real though, I do want to give Samsung some credit for stepping out and creating something cool. Like you, I've been having some concerns about their lackadaisical approach to design lately. Not much has changed over the years and it's starting to look a little bit like Cupertino over there. Next thing you know, they might start making their own version of AirPods. All right, now the hard part. How much is it? Well, like I said earlier, there's no subscription, so it at least has that going for it. But if you want to pick up the Galaxy Ring for yourself or someone you care about, it's going to set you back 400 bucks, 399 to be exact, with no option to trade in any old device, which is something I do often when a product uh, releases. That's usually when the trade-in is the highest. All right, so who do I think this is for? Well, like I said earlier, uh, me being a watch guy, and you know, sometimes you just want to wear your Seiko uh, automatic and change it up next week to a Citizen or whatever. I mean, you know, maybe you just don't want a big bulky smartwatch on your wrist, you know, dinging notifications at you all day. Me personally, I've gotten used to being able to swipe through Spotify tracks and read my text messages, and I mean, it's. It spoiled me, I will admit it. I've been spoiled by these watches, but I still like to wear a nice watch. And so, you know, if I still wanna track my, my steps throughout the day and, and kick my wife's butt in the challenge, then I need something like this. So uh, anybody that's looking to keep up with their fitness or even sleep tracking, but doesn't wanna wear a smart watch, I think this is perfect. I do feel like it's a little bit on the high side and it will probably come down in price a little closer to the holidays. I can only assume at least have more incentive for buying it. You might get $100 worth of accessory credits or something like that. I don't know. I feel like $399 is a little high and especially not taking like an old device in on trade. I feel like it was a missed opportunity to really bring in some others. And here's another hot take for you. I feel like if Samsung would have charged a subscription fee to non-Samsung users, because the Samsung Health app will work on other devices. Lauren uses a Pixel and her Galaxy Watch and Samsung Health and she works. Now she doesn't get all the features, but it still works at you know even doing these challenges. So I feel like they could have probably sold more of these rings, which would give them more incentive to design better rings later if they maybe just charged a small fee, three bucks a month, five bucks a month for non-Samsung users, or at least that would have brought them over to buy a Samsung device. Maybe. That's a hot take. Could be wrong, but that's going to do it for this one. I really do appreciate you stopping by. Be sure to hit the like button if you found it at all helpful, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. As always, take care of yourselves. You know you deserve it. I'm Donnie B, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Yeah.